Welcome back to the Hobby Homestead. Today is our potato harvesting day. It's October 15th right now, and we put these potatoes in the ground on May 18th, so it's been several months that they've been growing. This is a really exciting harvest, more exciting than any potato harvest I've done because we tried a Ruth Stout slash no-till slash no-dig potato growing method. This is actually a research trial that was funded through the Ecological Farmers Association of Ontario. So thank you EFAO for supporting myself and other farmers to do research like this. These potatoes were, I say planted in air quotes, because they were put on the ground, undisturbed ground, and then they were just topped with layers and layers of mulch. We put straw on about 12 inches deep and then we waited until the potato plant started to grow up through it. And then when they were about six inches above the straw, we put more straw mulch on top of that, just leaving a little bit of potato plant at the top so it could photosynthesize and keep growing. We got up to about 24 inches of straw mulch that we topped these potatoes with before we just let them be and let the plants grow wildly. We did not water these potatoes once this year. We did not weed these potatoes this year. Despite the fact that this field had been really disturbed with machinery in order to put in wetlands and change the landscape a bit when it transformed from a cornfield into a tall grass prairie with wetlands. The fact that the soil was very disturbed bringing up weed seeds from deep beneath. We would probably have a ton of weeds in this area if we didn't use deep mulch. And in fact, I can attest to that because this is the second year that this ground has been used for a garden. In the first year, there were a lot of weeds and we didn't use a ton of mulch. It was just mix in some horse manure, put some seeds in the ground and hope for the best. It was when my mom was just getting settled into this place and it was sort of, you know, get what you can into the ground and make the most of it in that year. Uh, this year, the mulch has meant that we had no weeding in this area, which is epic. It's epic for us, even though we're small scale and you know, I could probably manage to weed this area for the most part, but it's even more important for small scale farmers because that weeding an area of ground where you are growing enough food for a community, that's ridiculous. And so a solution like this that eliminates weeding could be really, really awesome. So now is the moment of truth. We aren't gonna find out if it is actually an awesome solution until we find out what our yield is. And we're looking at yield in two ways. There's the overall production from this plot, and then there's also the marketable weight. So we're gonna pull these potatoes today, we're gonna let them cure, and then we're gonna take a final weight on all the potatoes that are marketable. We need to know if there are issues like rodents chewing in them or bugs have gotten into them or they've started to rot or they're green because sunlight has hit them. These are all things that would make potatoes not marketable, not able to be sold. So we're gonna make sure we take that into account and only take final weights after curing of marketable potatoes. Anyway, let's get digging and see what's under there. We grew three varieties of potatoes, uh, two of which I knew did well for the farmers who did the same trial last year. So they're potatoes that did thrive in the no-till conditions. Oh my gosh, this is still really warm, <laughs> the straw on top. Um, and then the other variety was just because I wanted a white potato. I had a blue and I had a red and I wanted a white potato, so I tried another variety. Um, this variety here is Chieftain. And you'll see the potato plants are dead, they're done. To harvest potatoes for storage, you wanna make sure you're getting them after the plants have died back. And in fact, they'll cure a little bit in the ground before you're ready to harvest them if you let the plants die back and wait a week or two. It took a long time for the plants to die back this year because we had a really warm fall or early fall, September and early October. And now it has finally cooled down. It's like a high of 14 Celsius today. And we have had two freezing nights, although not freezing enough to kill things like the eucalyptus or the pepper plant over there. Just a touch of frost. Um, and tonight I think it's supposed to go down to two degrees Celsius. So it is an ideal time to get these things out of the ground. This is a bit nerve wracking what's gonna be under here. It's also weird to come out to harvest potatoes and not bring any tools like a pitchfork. Here's a potato. <laughs> Look, it's just sitting there. Not too shabby. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Well, see that one's not gonna be marketable because a bug was eating it, but that's okay. We'll still eat it. I'm laying back down the straw on top because it'll decompose. Keep the soil microorganisms happy over winter. This would for sure be easier if I just went and got a pitchfork to lift all the straw off. But um, I'm kind of too lazy to go find one. So they are a little rooted into the soil, which obviously they will be. It's a plant, it has to put its roots down, but there are no potatoes under the dirt. Ooh, look at this one. Clearly we forgot to remove the plastic off this piece of cardboard. Second row is now unearthed. This is Purple Majesty. Interestingly, there's areas where we have the wood chip pathway here, and I did find some potatoes growing in the wood chip pathway, so they clearly don't mind that as a mulch. We're on our last of the three 20 foot rows of potatoes. This is a variety called Bridget, and I was really, um, apprehensive, skeptical about this variety because when I bought them, the seed potatoes were all about this size. And I thought, that's weird, maybe they're just a really small variety. I didn't know anything about this variety. It's just what I could find on short notice. And a lot of them are coming out this size. So that's a good sign. So far we've got, uh, you know, one or two that have been eaten right through. However, I'm having trouble determining if these were maybe the seed potatoes that I planted because they're so rotten and the rest are all good. I don't know how I would know that. This is full of tiny little bugs though. One thing I would do differently if we did this next year where there's multiple rows is I would make sure there's space in between the rows to move your mulch aside. So I've kind of had to make do with pulling mulch aside from one row and then uh, when I get that row of potatoes pulled out of the ground, then I put the next row's mulch on top of that area. Also just having a little bit more room to work would be nice. I could get a pitchfork in here and get some good leverage to move the top layers of straw off 
as it is, I'm just picking it off with my hands and shoving it into little places where I can fit it. Uh, but this is just, you know, it's a garden. It's not a big field. And uh, we're working with what we got. So far, I'm really excited by this harvest. I haven't uh, tried pulling this, the plants with the potatoes much, but when I do, it's it just comes right off. And uh, that probably has something to do with the maturity of the potatoes, so the plants are f fully dead. Um, and also just the, the weight of straw on top. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to come in and just lift a plant and the potatoes would be with it. Now, if you were doing early potatoes, mid-season potatoes, you could probably do that because you'd be pulling a sturdy plant out. And that would be even easier for harvesting. One problem I'm seeing with this row in particular, right at this end, it's really wet. And I think we're getting some rotten potatoes in here. Um, some are totally fine. Some are eaten out completely. That one's fine, but it's like really squelchy and wet in this row. And I don't know why, because this is the same ground Maybe this is slightly downhill from all the others. Um, like I said, we didn't, we didn't water this at all, but the straw itself is holding a lot of moisture, more so than the other two rows. All right, these ones are all okay. But this section here was really, really wet and there's a couple really soft potatoes. I'm wondering if maybe the straw is deeper here. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but it could be a couple inches deeper. That might have been the problem. Didn't dry out as much. But so far, it doesn't seem to be a big problem. Just something I'm noticing. There's also a lot of pill bugs or potato bugs, roly polies in here. Um, and they're known to really enjoy potatoes. You can use potatoes as a trap to get them out of your other plants. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of them in here but they're only really going after the potatoes that are like already emptied and eaten. So I don't know if they just like chose a couple potatoes and stuck with them or if they were only eating the potatoes that were already rotting. These potatoes are going to sit to cure in, uh, in the basement for a couple of weeks before we take weights. And I want to organize them by potatoes that look really good right now and potatoes that don't look great right now. I'm going to put like the so-so potatoes in here and the ones that I think will probably be marketable potatoes in a separate basket. This is our final harvest right here in these boxes. I've organized them by looks pretty good, probably will be marketable quality, and obviously not gonna be marketable quality, but I'm gonna save them and let them cure because we're gonna use them early on. I mean, some of them have little worm holes in them, but we're gonna cut them open and use what we can out of them. Right off the bat, I can tell that the Purple Majesty, our blue potato, did the best. We got the greatest yield out of this, um, both marketable yield and, you know, questionable, questionable yield. There is a small handful of potatoes that were completely rotten. Five of these Purple Majesty and five Bridgets, I think, maybe six Purple Majesties and five Bridgets were rotten, mushy, totally mushy. I actually can't tell if those are the original seed potatoes or not. Maybe it was just um, potatoes that 
rotted throughout the season because there was too much moisture or maybe it was the original seed potato I planted in the spring in which case it's meant for it to rot away by this time I couldn't be certain uh, they're not in these boxes they're just set aside either way this is a pretty good yield um, we without looking at the numbers right now we probably quadrupled our seed potatoes in like good usable potatoes in terms of weight but we will we will see at the end of the day and uh, some of them are gorgeous and huge potatoes some of them are on the smaller side that's that is what it is when you're growing potatoes some of them get big some of them stay small I'm really happy with this so far we're gonna go and put this in my mom's basement in her cold room which is not that cold yet but it's nice and humid so it'll be a great place for these to cure for the next week or two and then I'm gonna take a bunch of weights on them and I will report back all right, it is about two weeks later now and I'm in my mom's cold room. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh our potatoes. I've now calculated all the weights and I wanted to put them on the screen for everyone to see. The first I weighed were the Bridget Organic. These were a white potato. I planted about two kilograms of the seed potatoes on May 18th. They were spaced about 10 to 12 inches apart on an angle so I could squeeze them closer together. The overall yield on these was 10.22 kilograms. We harvested October 15th. Most of these were marketable. They were perfect potatoes. A small amount, less than a kilogram, were either too small or too bug eaten to be marketable. The next category was Purple Majesty. These were our beautiful blue potatoes. I planted 1.4 kilograms of these seed potatoes on May 18th, same spacing as the others. And our harvest of these was an incredible 14.59 kilograms. And a lot were marketable, but there's also a higher number of unmarketable here. There were a lot of really small potatoes, so edible for us, but not able to be sold, I wouldn't think, if you were a farmer selling potatoes. Chieftain Organic Potatoes were a red variety, and I planted two and a half kilograms of these. At harvest, we got 12 0.05 kilograms and 9.15 kilograms were marketable just beautiful perfect red potatoes 2.9 kilograms were either too small or too bug eaten to be considered marketable or even edible to most but you know I took them home and I've been cutting out the bug tunnels and I've been still cooking with these potatoes and they are amazing all right, everything is now sorted, and this is what is in the marketable potatoes pile. This is the Bridget potatoes. I wish I remembered my light for this dark cold room, but they looking good. Little hands are on the Purple Majesty potatoes. There's a bit of a variation in size in these, but the overall yield was the greatest. And then we have Chieftain. Chieftain had some big, beautiful potatoes come out of it. And then all combined together, these are our rejects. And I think we should look a little bit closer at why they've been rejected. So this is the worst of the bug eating. The rest look way better than this. <laughs> it was mostly the chieftains that had this. And when I dug them up, I found the pill bug eating them. So I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, this is a Purple Majesty that has it too. It's still a solid potato. It's just been nibbled from the outside. So I'm just gonna cook with these right away. A couple of them, the Bridget's, I wasn't actually sure if it was bugs or a fungus because it's really deep and the potato is actually like healed over where like the entry point was for whatever was in there. It's not mushy, it's not rotting, it's not smelly but it's hollow almost. But for the most part, things are in here because they're small. And that's it. I mean, this box of potatoes is gonna feed us for a while. I don't care that I have to cut bad spots out of them. They're still great potatoes. And I'm out of time. My children are terrorizing grandma upstairs right now. I need to get out of the cold room, clean out my mess first, and then head out. Thank you so much for watching as we did this potato trial. It's been so much fun trying something new. There's so many ideas floating around in my head now for what I wanna do next year with these potatoes. But for now, we're just gonna wrap up our season. And I would say that this has been a really successful potato trial. And I will definitely try the no-till, root stout, no dig, whatever you wanna call it, method again in the future. Thanks for watching and I hope that you come and grow with us.